Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. Tender, slow roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. The bold flavor of Japan. Now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere. Blog Talk Radio. Join us for today's episode of the Utopian Realities Slope Save Life on Planet Earth Blog Talk Radio Show, bringing you solution bearers with practical, proven, scientific ways to help you eliminate global level irradiation and extinction level threats from your body and bringing forward the means to restore and sustain global waters, air, soil, and sentient life. Welcome. Greetings all, this is Lisa Wolf of Slope, Save Life on Planet Earth, your host, Welcome to the Utopian Reality Slope, Saturday Scientist Forum, where we speak with and make the global community aware of scientists with actual solutions to the ongoing Fukushima, North American, and global irradiation threat we're all facing that you can help bring to bear. Solutions do exist right now that can save us from global annihilation and bring about a utopian reality now. Our guest this Saturday is Dennis Watts. Dennis spent most of his career as a system engineer scientist in the aerospace industry, working on major programs such as the Space Shuttle, the International Space Station, and many other advanced one-of-a-kind systems for DARPA, the Pentagon. Now retired from this industry, he is pursuing his passion in quantum physics as it relates to health and healing and solving complex environmental problems, like remediation of radioactive waste in and around the Fukushima nuclear power plant site. He's a freelance consultant and advisor to Nexus Environmental Corporation and Clear Water Vision nonprofit organization. With over 35 years of experience in the holistic field of health and healing, Dennis uses his scientific mindset to find the root cause of problems and identify natural solutions and remedies. As Slope has reached out to find those with real answers to the crisis of Fukushima, Dennis is one of the solution bearers who stepped forward to ex- address this extinction-level threat. Welcome, Dennis. I want to thank you Hello. so very much for inviting me to have this opportunity to share some of my thoughts and ideas. Thank you. Pleasure. I have so much respect for um, what you've done and what you are um, proposing um, that needs to be done. Um, let's start by, if you wouldn't mind, um, tell us about your background and how you came to be an environmental systems engineer. Well, one of the things, of course, is that I've been primarily working in the aerospace industry, and I have to say they are the ones that hammered me into the person I am today. When I say hammered, you know, it's like, you know, that fine steel that you might find on a samurai sword after it's been hammered a thousand times. It's very hard, and it has gone through the ringer, and it is extremely strong and can cut through anything. Well, when you have customers like NASA or you have customers like the Pentagon or any of the military groups, those are some very hard customers, and you have to be extremely thorough in everything you do because people's lives depend on the solutions and that, and that you find. So as a result of working in the space shuttle program, uh, I learned a lot and became very, very uh, attuned to dealing with very complex issues across many disciplines all at once, and um, that kind of honed my skills for presenting and to, for bringing solutions to heart, heart problems to the administrators and the executives so we can move forward with our progress in a timely and, and, and budget-friendly manner. So um, from there, yes, you have a question? 
No, I don't. That's just wonderful. Oh, okay. It sounds like you're born to do this and trained to do this, Dennis. Yeah, in other words, I'm put in a position where any type of hard problem you throw at me, there's a good chance I will come up with a solution to it, no matter what it is. And I've spent my passion, of course, is health and healing, because a lot of people would have health issues that doctors couldn't figure out, and I had a skill level that would help me go deep and to burrow into what the root cause of it, and we can find, usually find uh, solutions. If the people have the resources and back and um, background, we can find a way to remedy their issues, whether it's cancer, diabetes, or lupus, or whatever. We can usually get to the root cause and help them find some sort of um, remedy. And so where we are now today, this problem with the radiation, um, those same skills apply. Go to the root cause. Now, what I'm looking at as a root cause is the fact that the reactors 1, 2, 3, and 4 basically blew up. They are spewing radiation into the air, into the soil. They had a China syndrome. In other words, the uh, fuel rods inside reactors 1, 2, and 3 basically melted together, created something called a corium, all the melted fuel rods, and they burned their way, the magma burned their way through the first level of containment, through the second level of containment, into the ground, into the groundwater, and out into the ocean is where it uh, ended up in a lot of cases. But, of course, uh, that whole trail is highly radioactive. When I say highly, we're talking about nine sieverts, I think, is what they measured over the last six or seven months. And that makes it very difficult to approach that facility under any circumstances because if that level of radiation touch your body, you are dead within 45 minutes to an hour. That's how powerful right. the force is as far as that relation as far as that radiation goes. So that is job number one. And um, I'm a researcher, of course, and I'm very, very familiar with a lot of the inventions that are going on around the world. And so I just simply researched and did a lot of um, study going through and talking to a lot of very brilliant inventors to figure out what we could put together as um, a, a, a let's say, a toolbox of uh, solutions. And this toolbox of solutions includes a product made by a very brilliant industrial chemist by the name of Peter Shastri, and um, we call it a nuclear remediation mineral blend. And he's put together a blend of minerals that actually can remediate radiation within about 72 hours. Most people don't are not aware of that because they're still thinking in terms of radiation lasting for hundreds of thousands and millions of years. Well, Which this radiation was what, this. What will it actually do? What will it actually do, Dennis, in those 72 hours? What it does is it creates a chain reaction that actually neutralizes alpha, beta, and gamma particles. That uh, that is the uh, light of the decay process in radiation or radioactive waste. And we can spray this onto the debris, and within 72 hours, all of the gamma particles, the beta particles, and alpha particles are neutralized. And that debris can be returned to the earth safely without causing any problems, hurt, harm, or danger. And so we want to use that to assist and neutralizing the fuel rods that are in building one that are on the fifth floor, precariously sitting there. Nobody can hardly get near them. They're having a hard time even setting cranes to run water because the cranes are even crumbling under the force of the radiation coming out of that area. And those cranes are crumbling because of something called the Wigner effect. That's one of the things that ionized radiation does is it embrittles metal, glass, concrete, all kinds of things like that. And in essence, radiation, as far as I can see, does cannot be contained. Eventually, it will get out. So what we want to do is to bring in a solution to not only neutralize the radioactive waste, but we need to find a way not to produce radiation and byproducts 
in the first place. So this other, uh, the scientist or industrial chemist has figured out something called an AST compound. This AST compound has the ability to create cold fusion whenever it's introduced into water. It is also a mineral blend that has been discovered that creates this cold fusion process, and we can dose water, and it will start to boil and create steam, and it can compress, and it can be compressed, and therefore drive turbines creating electricity via the generation systems that are already in place. So all we have to do is remove the radioactive fuel rods, add the AST compound, and a dose it with a feedback mechanism measuring the temperature and maintaining the right level of steam to drive the systems. Now, we want to introduce this to the whole planet. Yes, you have a question? And, yes, and this can be applied even with the difficulty in, in getting close to ground zero. Well, the difficulty of to getting close to ground zero, part of our solution is to use the nuclear remediation blend, to use something called a extremophile bacteria, because this extremophile can live in a radioactive environment and also consume radioactivity. And we want to put this also into the pathways of where the coriums went through first and second level containment and into the ground so that these bacteria can proliferate through a process called binary fission. And they grow geometrically depending on the problem at hand, and they will go in and consume the radioactivity. And as a result, all the particles that are radioactive become inert and can blend back into the earth with no problem. That's what we have seen some of our tests, and we believe that that is also part of the solution set so that we can, this, these, these bacteria, I call them bacteria, but really they're something totally different from bacteria because they're not RNA-based. They're, they're not DNA-based. They're RNA-based, which means they copy and um, they repair and they bring things back to normal. These are the original uh, microbes that laid the foundation for creation itself on this planet. And that's what allows the other bacteria to exist and to flourish. And that microme, uh, the microme of the planet, is what is vitally important for the health of our atmosphere, the health of our soil, and the health of life itself on this planet. So we have identified these microbes or extremophiles, and we want to utilize their capabilities for uh, mopping up the problems, not only here, but for all radioactive waste around the world and all nuclear power plants around the world as well. Wonderful. So, Wonderful. Um, Dennis, we'll be right back after a word about a sponsor um, to learn about more about how we can actually solve Fukushima Daiichi now and global irradiation. And okay. um, also to talk about why this hasn't been implemented yet and what people can do to help see that it is. We'll be right back. And now a word from a sponsor, New Portal, working with us to enhance life. Calling all world changers and visionaries, Attention, world changers and visionaries. Do you have a green or caring cause, project, or company that you want to take to your next level? Do you want increased production, increased income, funds, large or small funding programs? Then visit newportal.org. New Portal is more productive and profitable than combining Facebook, Salesforce, Kickstarter, e-commerce, email marketing, telemarketing, press releases, Google+, LinkedIn, Twitter. Visit newportal.org backslash bizcard backslash save life on planet Earth. New Portal, making a better future for us all.
Okay. Um, Dennis, let's get back to it. And um, so what, and that's not the only solution. That's part of, you have quite a few solutions to bring to bear. Um, Absolutely. And that I've collected a whole, number. <laughs> Why aren't we seeing this yet? Well, there are special interests that are, in essence, I got I like to call them obstructionists, similar to the John Boehners and Mitch McConnells in the Senate. They have a, a conservative view of the way they want to see the world, and they got the money and the power to block and stop everything that doesn't meet their status quo requirements. And um, so we've got to find a way to work around that, and that's what we're doing. But it's a lot of work to do that, and they've set it up to make it very difficult to get through. And um, so what we feel is though we are going to be successful. And we have yeah. some very, very high-level people around the planet right now that are supporting the effort to remove the obstructions and to make it safe for other ideas to come forward. Because right now all they're doing is moving the radiation around and um, putting it and storing it in tanks that are breaking down and coming apart, and the radiation is just simply blending into the ecology of all Japan, all of the air above Japan and around Japan. And even in 2013, I found photos of the ocean around Japan actually in steam that's coming off the ocean, which means the ocean is, in, is boiling because too much radiation is flowing into it. And when the currents pick that up, and move it across the ocean, that's poisoning our phytoplankton. That's poisoning the fish. That's poisoning the food chain and the ecology of the whole ocean. And that has got to and stop. And the only way we can do that is get to the root cause. That means going and in and resolving what? what's happening in, you know, the reactors one, two, three, and 4. And until we get that, it's going to be difficult for us to clean up and restore the balance in the ecology of our ocean. Now, as far as fixing the ocean, once we have resolved that using the nuclear remediation blend, using the extremophiles, using something called a J-tube or a Johnny tube, something that was designed by Nancy and John Hutchison out of Oregon, I've been in touch with them, and they're willing, willing and ready to share this valuable technology, which creates a holographic, 3D bubble of hydro at the hydrogen frequency, and they have identified this hydrogen frequency to be something that actually neutralizes radiation within about 20 minutes is what they have found. And this t technology is very, very unique in that they have even went so far as to design a self-charging battery to go with it so that you don't have to be near the grid in order to make this technology work. So this technology can be placed in remote areas, like out in the middle of the ocean, for instance. And that's what I want to do is to incorporate their technology from the standpoint of designing um, smart buoys. And when I say smart buoys, I'm talking about buoys where we can put in a, a system where we put in the latitude and longitude, set this thing into the ocean, and it goes to that latitude, longitude, and stays there. It has collision avoidance technology, so if boats are coming by, it will swim out of the way, out of the way of the boat, and then come back to its normal setting. And we can build a grid of these technologies across the whole ocean, and as a result, hopefully heal the ocean using this Johnny Two technology, and that is self-powered. And so that's Wonder going to be something that we want to put together, and we're raising the funds so that we can hire a Boeing or a Northrop or a Lockheed to put the production facilities together to make that happen on a grand scale. That's one thing, yeah. and we want to use that same basic technology in these very smart drones that can hover and do the same thing where we can find a, a point in space, give these drones collision avoidance technology, and allow them to clear the upper atmosphere, which is full of radiation as well. And I believe that's one of the problems that's happening to a lot of people that travel that think they have the flu. And in essence, what they really have is an upper respiratory infection because they have flown through too many radioactive clouds or through, yeah. through the upper atmosphere in their private jets 
and through commercial as well. And as a result, yeah. that's just my opinion. I think that's what probably happened to Prince who just passed because he had his private jet. He could go anywhere he wants. He had what he thought was the flu, and the next thing you know, he experienced something called instant death syndrome, IDS. Now, this is happening by the thousands over in Europe right now because of people suffering from the results of Chernobyl. After 30 years, that radiation is creating a situation they call IDS, instant death syndrome. And that's what we're going to be experiencing unless we get this resolved um, quickly here in America as well as in Japan and in Asia as well as the whole world is engulfed with a level of background radiation right now. Yes. Let's um, let's bring it home. Um, Many of our listeners are, are here in North America what are we already seeing in North America? That's one question. And why should people be taking it seriously? People say, well, we've had nuclear tests and there's been, you know, background radiation for a long time. And also, what is the prognosis if we don't deal with this? Those well, two Bob Nichols is a journalist and reporter, and he reported radiation back on April the 2nd of this month to the 9th. They were looking at measurements in various cities all around the country. Like, for instance, in San Diego, it was like 1,431 clicks per minute. Now, normal background radiation should be around 5 clicks per minute, no more than 20 clicks per minute. That's from normal cosmic radiation from all the stars and the suns and space itself that might sneak through and get down to the ground to be measured. But when you have a background radiation of 1431 or 1604, and that was in Miami, Florida, by the way, back in April 2nd through the 9th, and that is the how many counts per per minute of radiation. Now, you should be evacuating people when you are anywhere between 100 to 300 clicks per minute. And we have a number of these cities, major cities like San Diego, Colorado, uh, Spokane, Washington. The radiation is extremely high. And if you were to try to escape to some place to get safe, to think you're being safe from radiation, it, it, it's, it's going to be hopeless. And I'm not blaming all of that on Fukushima. I think I think all of the nuclear power plants we have about 104 in this country, if I'm 114. I'm not mistaken, and these plants are leaking like sieves with radiation, and they probably well, didn't know it, don't know it, but it's accumulating in our environment, and the background radiation, in my opinion, is one of the things creating heart disease, um, death, uh, I'm talking about um, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, leukemias, um, sudden heart attacks and all kinds of cardiovascular diseases, I believe that the background radiation is one of the main root causes for this kind of degradation of people's health around the country. And we don't know yes, it because we're they're not seeing. public no. So we're what we have we increased infant death um, on the West Coast. Isn't that something that's showing up already as well? Well, the infant mortality rate is increased by 40-some percent, and that is, I believe, because of the background radiation. Radiation is extremely poisonous to infants and toddlers and small children because of the fact that their brains are growing at such rapid rates, and the presence of radiation is antagonistic to the process of creation itself. In other words, radiation melts the fabric of creation itself and that's what we need to understand and this is why we want zero radiation in our environment and we are coming up yeah. with ideas in order to make that possible and that's why I was talking about the AST compound being introduced the nuclear remediation blend following up to clean up the existing radiation that they've stored in the earth thinking that it's going to stay there but it's going to find its way out it's going to find its way into the ecology and in a lot of cases that's what has happened but nobody wants to talk about it for fear of lawsuits. So that means people are walking around, getting poisoned, 
and don't know it. So we have to be proactive and understand what's going on in our environment and do things to protect our children and to protect ourselves. And that is and you we also- are so the plan that we have is to set up these clinics. We call them the Hollywood Health and Hope. And Hollywood Health and Hope are going to be the mainstay where we are setting up non-invasive technologies for cleaning and clearing and detecting if you have an over amount of a free radical activity, which means you have possible radiation poisoning. A lot of free radicals are generated in the presence of radioactive nuclides moving about your body. And so we want to introduce to these clinics, through these clinics, technologies called the Energy Enhancement System, designed and developed by Dr. Sandra Rose Michael. We want to bring the technology for doing 3D scans, similar to what you've seen on Star Trek. That technology yes. exists in the market, and Dr. Luba Diangar is going to provide that. We have Mandara Conwell out of Atlanta, Georgia, with the cymatic technology. There was about 67 years of research having a whole library of sonics and sounds and frequencies for healing the body, and we want to introduce that technology. Then we have nutrients, nutrients such as folium PX. That is an excellent um, supplement. It was designed to help the people and the animals back when... um, Chernobyl happened, and that product is still available today, and we should be getting our hands on it and getting it into our system to help keep it clear of heavy metals such as mercury, heavy metals such as lead, arsenic, cadmium. All of these things can be removed by using this Folium PX product. And that you can Google that, and Barbary Oren is one of the main distributors and administrators out of Tarzana, California, and he'll be more than glad to get that product into your hands. He's right now trying to help the people in Flint, Michigan, who have a major problem with their children being full of lead because of drinking poisonous lead-filled water. So um, that also that same product is very good for removing radiation out of the system as well. So yes, well, they Dennis, we have a I'm whole bevy have of. To- I'm going to have yes. to bring you back for another show because we're just getting started and we're almost done. So, um, listeners, please go to http um, colon backslash wtsenate.info backslash nexus, which is N E X S U S backslash Fukushima backslash executive summary to read Dennis's remediation proposal. And for another Essential Slope Bioremediation Solution, join us tomorrow, Sunday, April 24th, at when Joshua Flint of The Goodly Company will join us to talk about the miracle of life crystals for enlightenment and bioremediation. And for more information, contact whitebuffalonation at gmail.com and visit wbnslope.weebly.com on our White Buffalo Nation Facebook page and support the slope mission at gofundme.com backslash slope. We have it set up so your donations go to support the science we're bringing forward. Together, we can save life on planet Earth. That's yours, mine, and all of ours, on and in the land, waters, and air. Thank you, Dennis, for joining us. Thank you so very much for this opportunity, Lisa. You have a great day. Much love and many blessings to you and your listeners. Yes. We will we will win this. Till next time, this is Lisa the Wolf for Slope. Save life on planet Earth. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my
Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and to Dennis Watts, and thanks to Anton Miserak of ShastaSong.com for the music used. Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Today, Bridget Griffin shared a video of her daily yoga routine, two self-help articles, and her new blog called Build Your Inner Bridge with Bridge. Girl, your sharing is turned into oversharing. No worries, Bridge. Geico has some info worth sharing with your seven blog followers, like how you could save money on your car insurance, update your policy, and report a claim just by visiting geico.com. How's that for building your inner bridge? Bridge, Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.